What is good? We're back with another episode with our guy JB. Today we are going to tell you what every pick in the first round is worth. Maybe if we get that far, because sometimes things get off the rail and the time goes too far. <laughs> so we're going to do our best uh, to try to get through there. We're going to put up, you know, Caleb versus this guy and see if we would take the pick of the guy. Uh, so that's basically the idea of the show. We've kind of did this before. Last time you were on, thought it was a good time to revisit. Um, and it's a question that we get a lot, this guy or, or, or the pick. Uh, mm -hmm. So I figure let's let's hammer that out. And I think we could start off right away with if you have the opportunity to draft at the one one, is there anything besides a ridiculous offer that's get that, that's getting you off of it, or should I even proceed with throwing out some guys here? No, there. I mean, I actually don't mind moving. And we've talked about this. We talked about it the last time I was on. We just talked about it a little bit in the the buy low episode we put together. But there are. There's actually a good amount of situations I would move off the 101, 102 if I can move back and stay within the top seven picks, whether it's adding veterans, whether it's adding uh, additional picks in this year's draft, maybe future picks. But I, it would, it would take a little bit. It would take a decent amount. Yeah. But I would certainly entertain some trades. And I, I have a few 101s and 102s across my portfolio, and I don't think I've moved any up to this point. Just because you know, yeah, uh, that's people, on the clock, people it's are hibernating be, yeah, a little yeah, bit. The, the, yeah. It's like the the Munchkins and the Wizard of Oz. Everybody will be coming out eventually. <laughs> uh, but up to this point, I've held on to them. I, I think there's a little bit of prospect fatigue, especially with Caleb Williams. Sure. But once we get closer to rookie drafts, that value is going to come up a little bit. Uh, but yes, there are certainly situations that I would be interested in trading back. Or trading out altogether, yeah, depending I, on the types of pieces I could get. I think that's a good way of putting it. I got to stay within, you know, maybe even for me inside the top four to move mm -hmm. back. Like I like I like Roman Bowers, but they're probably on the back end of that. And especially if I'm quarterback needy, um, I, I want to stay in there or or really, really, you know, I guess if I'm wide receiver needy, I'm more willing to kind of move back to because I like Rome a lot. I don't see a huge difference between Rome and, and neighbors for me personally. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that's not the way some a lot of people feel. So, all right, w for this exercise, I'm going to try to leave like adding a bunch of ancillary picks to it. We're just going to try to keep it a little bit more like one for one. Yeah, on some sure. things. And, and certainly if you want to add say, caveat things, you certainly may. I just don't want to get caught up with every one of adding, you know, all the ancillary pieces. So one, there, one, there's so much there's so much gray area with every single situation. Uh -huh. And I'll try to be concise so we can actually get through more than two picks. A hundred percent. Um, right now we got Caleb Williams going at the 112 in our FFD ADP. Uh, so I would assume for you know maybe the top four to five QBs you would flip the 114, right? Allen, Mahomes, Hertz, Lamar, Stroud, Burrow, and Herbert. I'll and take Herbert. seven. I'll take. Seven, I know there's the negative perception with Justin Herbert. Oh, give me all the Herbert. Buy low, they, Herbert. They might only throw three times a game this year with, yeah. with Harbaugh there. <laughs> yeah, but they're I'm, running the wing T. Without a doubt, I'm taking the the top seven quarterbacks there over Caleb Williams. Okay, how about Anthony Richardson? I have them tiered together, but if I have to pick, uh, if it's plus six for passing touchdowns, I will go Caleb gun to head. If it's plus four. I think I would switch to Anthony Richardson. I, I, I'm picking up what you're putting down, and I like it. So let's let's keep it moving from Caleb because I think that's that's about where we draw the line. I think we're we're right there. Uh, let's go to one two with Marv, and I think we could maybe. Do, would you combine Marv and Neighbors here as kind of one, or do you see them a little more separate? Before I ask the questions, I. I prefer Marvin. Okay, I I, I do. Um, I have a tear break in between them. I. I th think the top three wide receivers are going to be fantastic. But again, I think this is, it's just more prospect fatigue. I'm not saying necessarily with you, but across the oh, board, sure. I, I, well, if his name wasn't you know, Marvin Harrison, I, I mean, he put together a tremendous yeah, profile. Well, Brendan still. Rice isn't in the fucking first round. So, you know, uh, you know if Frank, Frank, Frank Gore, yeah. Brendan Rice. Yeah. 
you know, it ha- just happens to be good, you know? Right. Um, and good so for I him do see a for not working out, you know, good for him for not working out. You know, I'm, I, I'm okay with it. Like, I like it. I, I said this on the, the, the show there, like Caleb, especially the quarterbacks that have really proven themselves and, and Marvin Harrison, I mean, neighbors didn't do a lot of the work, the on-field workouts. They can only hurt their stock. Sure. This is a business, right? I, unless there were a situation where I needed to go out there and show what I can do, because, you know, for some reason, the scouts didn't see it week in and week out during my collegiate career. Uh, (laughs) Then, then I would go out there because I think there is upside and there's a benefit and it outweighs the risk. But for these kids that are at the top that are pretty much locked in, there's too much unnecessary risk. And now with like the in-game speed and the GPS, like all that stuff, we're good track. (laughs) Yeah, they know how many times a day these kids shit probably. Yeah, oh, like, I'm with sure. With all the tracking, like I, I sit out. Yeah, I have no issue. I agree. Uh, all right, so Marv or, or Saint Brown, uh, same tier, but Amon Ra Saint Brown. Like I, I think he's still so disrespected. I'm gonna go Amon Ra Saint Brown. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, how we about- continue to see it year after year. People want to discount what well, was a fourth round pick. Uh, you know, it doesn't have elite speed only produced when certain players were out The quarterback question marks. I, the kid just performs year after year. I, the ceilings there and he's safer. Fair enough. Yeah. I, I, I think, um, you know, we got two, one St. Brown goes in our ADP and Marvin Harrison is two, five. So that's, that's yeah. real, real close right there. Um, I would, I'd flip a coin, but I, I don't hate it. How about Brees or Bijan? I don't know which one you have as the RB one, but would you trade in the RB one for the best currency in fantasy, that elite star potential wide receiver? What are your thoughts? Cause I'm, 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 st- I'm sticking with either one of those running backs for me. Like, you know, I know everybody hates it, but those dudes are proven. Brees came back from an ACL on a shit team and slayed it. Bijan moving forward with a, an actual offense where he's going to be the guy. Like I'm, I'm good, man. Like I, I like the idea of Marvin Harrison. It sounds awesome. And maybe in a year I'll be saying, Hey, you're an idiot. You should have done that flip there, but I'm keeping, I'm keeping those two running backs. They're just, they're difference makers in your lineup. And I know it right now. Marvin could be, um, but you know, we don't know. And so what say you? On this week's episode of The Pivot Point, Mitch and I just talked about a startup that he did and something he was looking to do. If he has a pick that's like 110, 111, 112 in startups, he was double tapping running back at the turn and he was going like a Bijan and Gibbs. And then he got Brees Hall at 301 because it was a a third round reversal. Mm -hmm. And he passed on like a Marvin Harrison. He actually passed on, uh, I, I forget who the other player was that kind of raised a red flag for me. If it's start two wide receiver, I'm okay with the running back. That's if a good start point. That's a, that's three, a good point. If it's start three wide receiver. I don't play in communist leagues that make me start three. <laughs> I, just, I just want the extra flex. But I mean, go on because you're right. They exist. People like them. Listen. Over here in the red state, okay. Now, uh, I I'll go Marvin if it start three wide receivers. Yeah, okay. I, that's a that's that's a good point. That's fair enough. Um, I, so we can proceed in the same manner. Would you you going neighbors next, or are you taking the two quarterbacks? I will take. When you say two quarterbacks, which two? May and Daniels. Okay, uh, I'm certainly taking Jaden over. Neighbors and I have neighbors in a Dunes A tier together. I okay. like Rome checks every box. I think he's going to be just awesome. super good. He's going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, depending on my league dynamic, if the quarterback market is relatively weak, or if I already have like three high end quarterbacks, I'm going to go one of the wide receivers over Drake May. But there are like on the other hand, if it's a strong quarterback market within my specific league or uh, my, my quarterbacks are certainly lacking, I will go Drake May. All right. Well, let's start with the quarterbacks then. Let's go. Let's go. Jaden Daniels or uh, Jordan Love. 
I'm going to go Jordan Love. And I think I, I think that was my pick. I think we did this exact one last time I did was we? on. All right. And I, I, I'm going to stick with Jordan Love. Uh, tiered together, but I don't want to give any cop-out answers. So, uh, I think we asked this question with Brock Purdy before, too. I went with the rookie quarterbacks. I think I'm still sticking there. What do you say with Brock Purdy? Tiered together. And actually with Purdy and Love, I'm going to give the little asterisk again. Six-point passing touchdowns give me Purdy and Love. Four point passing touchdown. Give me Jaden Daniels. Yeah. But I think I could get a plus with Brock Purdy if I if a it were a trade. Now, if it's a startup, obviously it's gonna be difficult, but uh that that's where I'm going. So plus six, Purdy or Love, plus four, Daniels, but trying to get the plus if moving that rookie pick. How about tight end premium? Would you trade one of those quarterback picks for Sam Laporta? What's the premium? One, five, one, five. Give me the quarterback. Yeah. I think I'm with you there. Two PPR. I switch. How about Chris Olave? Or, or may I'll go may. And I'm actually going to go, as crazy it's, as it sounds, I'm going to go neighbors and Adunze over Olave as well. Okay. Well, I I was kind of I'm kind of grouping the two quarterbacks together. I know you like Jaden a little more. Um, trying to find a, a somebody that you would. How about Trevor Lawrence or Jaden Daniels? Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels. Okay. Dak, we, your boy, your boy Dak from the bottom left. Dak know. or Daniels? Uh. Give me the DAC attack straight up. All right. I like it. There we go. Dak. There we got it. We got a swap. We Give got me the a swap. Dak. How about um all right, let's move let's move to Malik Neighbor. So we're obviously kind of dancing around. It's kind of which pick and how you have these guys slotted is kind of how they're going through. So we're, mm-hmm. you know, we could just say we're at around the one five right now, one four, yep. depending on how you have these quarterbacks. Um so we'll go to Malik Neighbors here. How about Malik Neighbors or Jameer Gibbs? Jameer Gibbs. Same. Um, Malik Neighbors or Garrett Wilson? Garrett Wilson. Same. Puka. Puka. Puka, Puka right? Yep, Puka, Puka or Neighbors? Puka. And, and I think I think I went Puka before, and I want to say, because I'm psychotic, and I go through and read the comments on the, the videos, I think some one of your one of your viewers yelled at me about that, uh, they, I think. Pe- people like to yell. People like to I yell. I think. Not me. I'm a very quiet guy. I'm very <laughs> composed. I never yell. All right. Well, we got we got a couple of, we got a couple of fun ones there. How about uh, let's let's move it down to to Roma Dunze and let's let's Sam Laporta or or, or Roma Dunze. I would take one point five. Lapor- I would take Laporta in one point five. Uh, whereas before, I made the switch between one point five and two. Whenever you asked me, yeah, with Laporta. So I'll go Laporta. As long as it's at least 1.5, I'll go him over Adunze. And, and you said Chris Olave over Roma Dunze at, at this point. Or uh, Roma Dunze over Chris Olave, sorry. I will take Roma Dunze over Chris Olave. Whew. That's that's a cool, and I'm a huge Roma. I'm I'm probably one of the sole reasons I've driven this ADP where it is on on our ADP because uh-huh. I'm in most of the drafts. Um but man, that's a that's a close one for me. I, it, why? The, why? Because quarterback play, or well, I can't even say quarterback play because if Adunze goes to the Giants, yeah, like how does that look? You know, I, I think Alave is, is a really good player, but and I I believe I talked about this last time I was on talking about the unrealized air yards with a player like Chris Alave, and eventually you'd think they would become realized yards and actual fantasy points for you on your team, but. You know, still waiting here. I like. I think the ceiling, the range of outcomes, I believe for Roma Dunze is wider than a player like Chris Olave. I think he's got a uh, overall. I think he's a little bit safer. He being Chris Olave, but ceiling wise, I just, I truly think Roma Dunze is like a difference making prospect. Yeah, I, I I totally agree. I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna agree even though i think in my rankings let's see where i have where i have roma dunze 
and Olave. I have I have Roma Dunze and Malik Neighbors in the same tier as Chris Olave. Um, so I actually like just until was it last week maybe I had Olave tiered with them. Yeah. And then I just like in startups or existing leagues, I'm looking at trade opportunities. I'm like, I'll, I, if I have to pick between the top seven picks and Chris Olave, I'm taking one of the top seven. You know, a lot of my leagues are two PPR for tight ends, so Brock Bowers sure. slotting in above oh, that's him as a, well. A no-brainer for me with two points. Yeah, it's like, and I like Olave a lot, but I think he's just gonna be, and I say just like that wide receiver two that you can, you know, feel good about being your dynasty wide receiver. Or, Wide receiver two on your dynasty roster. Right. Right. Um, all right. So Drake London gets Kirk Cousins. Does he enter in a conversation where you might want to swap Roma Dunze or that one six ish pick for um Drake London? Or is it is that is that too rich for your blood? You'd rather take because I'm taking I'm I'm sticking with Roma Dunze there. I just like the possibility and the range of out and I like Drake. I've been I didn't think the Drake value moved a ton for me because I felt like a quarterback change was already kind of baked into the ADP of what was happening. Right. Bingo. Right. Bingo. I, with, with Pitts, with, with London, uh, you know, we kind of, you have to uh, kind of project a little bit. Right. Right. And we knew they weren't rolling into the season with Desmond Ritter and Taylor Heineke. Right. Like you, you, you knew something was going to give and just like you said, I had London. I have him right between that 107 and 108. So, like, I will take the top seven over London. I will take London over the 108. Yes, same. But, got- but let's say J.J. McCarthy just gets an absolute crazy landing spot. Everybody's in love. He, he goes super high in the NFL draft. I could see people preferring J.J. McCarthy in super flex leagues to a player like Drake London especially if they need a quarterback. I'm yeah, not there, me neither. but I could see it being a very realistic possibility. Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a good point. I, I'm, I'm certainly not there either. Uh, right. But yeah. So, so Rome over Drake. Yes. And I, I might, like you said, I might be kicking myself when you were talking about like Marvin Harrison or one of the stud running backs. But I, I think I, I, I just think from a prospect standpoint, like Drake London, Really good prospect. I think Roma Dunze, like just stud, absolute stud in the making. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm lockstep with you there. Um, all right. One more on Roma Dunze. Roma Dunze or Jonathan Taylor? This, <sighs> this is the tightest one probably between the two there. But I, I think I'm sticking with Rome, even though I'm a guy who's going to, you know, always cape for those stud running backs. Um Long pause. Love it. This is a long pause. <laughs> can I, I said I don't want to give a cop out answer. It's okay. Can, give it. Can I say my team direction? Like it would yes. my roster construction would play a role here. Uh that's fine. I could see it going both ways where <sighs> I hate you. Uh <laughs> It, roster construction is going to come into play. But if I have Jonathan Taylor, I think I can get a little bit more than the 107 by itself. Right. Cop out answer. I know. Yeah, that's I a, know. That's, that's, that's fair enough. Um, I think that's, I think that's the, the right answer. Cause I, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of this in the vacuum. Like I said, just trying to compare players. It's just, this, this people are always asking us this. So I think it's, you know, a, a good show to kind of give, you know what's moved around where we're at here, but I'm, I'm I'm with you. So let's let's move on to Brock Bowers, and we'll call it we'll stay in the, we'll call it 1.5 premium here. Um, and I think we did this last time. Trey McBride or Bowers? I'm going McBride. I'm sticking with uh, I'm sticking with McBride. Same tier, but I actually will go McBride as well. Just because I know, um, and I think Bowers is going to be great. But everything that I know about where McBride is, what McBride is, tar- all that stuff from last year, I- I'll take Trey McBride. How about Mark Andrews? You know, probably going to come bounce right back and be the tight end one or two, and but seems to be kind of slept on right now and just kind of forgotten about a little bit. I'm going to go Brock if I have to choose. I know uh, there was a That's conversation. What the ADP on, says there was a conversation on Twitter about those two, and I know a lot of people felt very strongly saying, "How could you trade 
Mark Andrews for Brock Bauer straight up. You know, uh, it's just a way to lose in Dynasty. I, I'm taking Brock. Call me call me foolish, but I'm I'm taking Brock in the uh, six years, you know, seven years that you're buying back. Yeah. Yeah, it's really hard when you put it that way. You know, it's it's a 28-year-old Andrews, I think, um, and then a really young, possibly really elite prospect in Bauer. So it's it's hard not to take the mystery box of what Bowers could be. Um, I think if Andrews would have had a tight end, the tight end one or two season last year, a lot more people would feel differently than, you know, how are you going to, you know, probably the winning move is to take Mark Andrews and just if you got a winner and you're ready to go on 1.5 and just roll with it. But it's really hard to turn down that mystery box. How about Nico or Brock Bowers? They're one one spot away in ADP. Uh, uh, I will go 1.5 premium. Yeah, uh, I'll go Brock. I'm going to go Brock just because I think it's a little See, the 1.5 is throwing me off, and you can tell I'm backtracking my mind a little bit here because I'm looking at my tiers, and I have everything uh, calibrated for two PPR. Yeah. But Nico, Brock, 1.5. I will – you know what? I will go Brock still in 1.5. It, it's super close. And I, I, you can make a case either way, um, but then you get into one point seven five or two PPR. I think anything over one five, I'll go Bowers one five or less. I'm I'm probably going to stick with Nico Collins, but really goes against my camp. I'm a I'm a big believer even in one point five of smashing tight ends because I just yeah. when they get the volume, they're as good. At, they they can easily be inside the top. 12 15 of wide receivers so so quickly and then two forget about it like two i'll take the tight end almost every time if it's anywhere close and and this is a unique situation because with brock bowers you don't know where he's going to land right we think he's going to be a great player but we've seen people struggle that were supposed to be top tier prospects across every position nico collins it took him a few years but now he's tied to one of the most exciting quarterbacks in all football the the direction of the team it looks like they're headed in the right direction finally so it, yeah i love what they're doing free agency in 1.5 ppr like if i saw a trade brock bowers for nico collins i wouldn't bat an eye yeah like that's how close it is for yeah, me fair fair all right well this is where it gets interesting because now we're getting to one eight and there's yep. a whole bunch of discourse of who could be where jj mccarthy gets a good spot he could be in the one eight um if not you know i think a lot of people have brian thomas there i like worthy before he ran fast because i already knew he was fast and i like yep. what he does um so i had i got i kind of have worthy up in this tier and i actually had lad up in this tier before um the combine as well and that just you know stamped it for me troy franklin right. of course in that rotation uh here as well so Let's go through here and just kind of talk about what you, right now our ADP says Brian Thomas for sure ahead of all those guys in startups. Um, so one eight, what would you would you? How about JSN now getting new new coordinator? Uh, but Lockett's kind of re-upped for two years for sure. Give me the one eight. One eight over JSN. Uh, yeah, and again tiered together, but I just like the flexibility and. With the 108, you you have a wider range of potential trade partners. I think yeah, yeah. JSN. You have probably you're gonna very make that few- pick and hang on. You're sitting. You're hanging out with JSN for a minute, right? Yeah, right. Like, Which that, I'm that, fine with, but I think what you're saying is 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 a good way to look at it. Yeah, and it's, especially because like if we're just saying the 108, you don't need to you don't need to pick who that player is right now. Yeah. Unless you have a uh, rookie draft pre NFL draft, which they're a lot of fun, but they're dangerous. Yeah. You, you yeah. never know. Oh, what's gonna sure. happen. Yeah. Uh, oh. So you get a good landing spot for Brian Thomas. Heck, what if he goes to Buffalo towards the end of the first uh, Xavier worthy lands in Kansas city, JJ McCarthy gets top 10 draft capital. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, the top 10 picks in this year's draft talk about top seven or even top- JJ just going to Minnesota at 11 or whatever it is. You right. Know, just exactly. Good spot. So but can he beat out Sam Darnold? That's the question. <laughs> that, that will, that will forever be a question. How about T Higgins or Brian Thomas? We're calling Brian Thomas the one eight right now. You know what? Give me, give me Brian Thomas. And I like T a lot. Yeah. But he's been so, 
Like there's, it's so frustrating getting certain players in your lineup. And I don't want to say somebody's injury prone, but I don't know if like, maybe it's the type of, uh, of targets he's garnering where they're all like the, the high a dot he's going down the sideline. He's going up for it. He's cracking his head on the turf, whatever the case may be. Like he just seems to miss time all the time. Yeah. And it might not be a full game, but losing half a game questionable to return getting that that update on twitter it's demoralizing and it it can get very frustrating so if i have the chance to move off of a t higgins for 108 or brian thomas if you want to call it that i'll move off yeah i mean like i said it's going to be interesting the back half of this draft because if jj gets it and let's even if if the other two court like there's a chance not highly likely, but all we could have all the quarterbacks going in the first round, really, at the end of the day. Like, there's enough needy teams right now that that drafted stop that, that just paid stop gaps that need right. a quarterback that could potentially even be going. And so, you know, we could be talking about Brian Thomas potentially down, you know, the, where the you know the quarterbacks could at least it could be Bo Nix or Penix in this in the seven or in the eight and the nine spot here, depending on what you like. Now, you know, I don't, I don't, not, I'm not super high on JJ, not super high on. Knicks, I love Penix, big Penix guy. Um, he'd be my choice to go to the Vikings or, or somewhere like that. But so it'll be interesting because I think these values can kind of shift around a little bit. So let, let's just call it one nine right now. We don't really know who it is, Mystery Box or Kyle Pitts. I'm in, taking Kyle Pitts. I'll yeah, take, give me. I'll give, take give Kyle me Pitt. Pitts one eight one nine. Yeah, even in one point five. One point five. Yeah, I'll, I'll take Pitts. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm swinging, I'm swinging there. We've seen good stuff from Pitts. Maybe a little banged up last year, and Arthur Smith and quarterback play. Uh, we saw that you, just like we talked about Calvin Ridley in the last video. There's a whole bunch of missed targets on on Pitts being open and under overthrown. Um, and he he was having some separation issues, but again. I think it's because he was banged up, and I'm not a huge Pitts guy. Banged I mean, up and mis- misaligned, like you got a you got a mismatch guy here. Don't put him on the guy who don't don't put him you know put him get him on the linebacker or the safety. Don't get him on the you know the slot corner. I mean, yeah, I mean, you look at certain coaches like what they do in, with the Rams. They they create those mismatches, you know, right. uh, which is know, where he's certain, what he's going to be in, kind of, you know, yeah. Rams offense essentially. Yep. Yeah. So I'll take Pitts. Yeah. How about how about those running backs like the, the you know Jacobs and Barkley just moved up a good bit. This is a range where you'd be willing to to move the eight through whatever to 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 maybe get one of those on a competitor. Because I am Barkley. I, Barkley for sure. And I Jacobs tiered together. My league dynamic would come into play a little bit there. Like I and just the way I build a lot of my rosters, like I I have so many teams with like even a Jacobs already, but like a Jacobs, uh, Montgomery, Derek Henry, Alvin Kamara, James Conner, Aaron Jones. So like if I'm rolling with four or five of those types of guys already, I'm probably going to stick with the pick. Sure. A hundred percent. But but I certainly have some rosters where maybe they're a little bit thinner at running back. And I know we're not supposed to be paying for running backs, but Josh Jacobs, that four year contract in green Bay where Aaron Jones has smashed it time and time again. Yeah. I, I can buy into that. Yeah. How about, how about Kincaid here? Last year's guy kind of probably going around this, this area would I I'd be down to swap these, you know, most of these picks maybe outside of Xavier worthy for, you know, I think, Dalton Kincaid, I, I think he had a pretty good rookie season. It just got outshined by Sam Laporta um, being awesome. I think he still had 70-some targets. Um, yeah, Kincaid. he did have a good season. I think, like, you know, you see 1. Buffalo 5. restructuring that Dawson Knox contract already. Yeah, what, what are you I think doing? they're like, what were we doing there? Yeah. Um, you have to think that his role is going to grow. But, yeah, any other, any other rookie draft class – You'd be sitting here saying, oh, my God, Kincaid. But, like, he shined bright. Not as bright as Sam Laporta. Right. But I will, I'll take Kincaid over that 110-ish, yeah. 
And so I want to, we'll kind of close up. We'll, 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 we'll put 110 through 112 kind of together here. And, and, and just, can I say, I hate ahead. these, I hate these, com- the, the <laughs> questions you're throwing at me with these tight ends and 1.5 PPR. Fair enough. It. Fair enough. Well, so George Pickens maybe getting a little boost right here. Where, where does George Pickens fit in on the rankings of trading? You know, I don't think you're not trading him for anything inside the seven, but once we get to eight, I think it's fair game for me to swap any of those receivers out with Pickens for what the upside could be. I know some people hate Pickens. They don't like some of the metrics, but like we've just seen Pickens just be a raw beast out there. Um, and that's kind of, you know, you're, you're hoping you can get that from any of these guys, eight to, to 12 here. So I, I would roll the dice on Pickens from what I've seen his ability to do in the league already than any of those guys. What about you? 111 or 112 that the, I have 111 and 112 tier together. Right now, I have Trey Benson and Troy Franklin sitting there side by side. That's where I have George Pickens tiered. So if you want to swap one of them out, if you want to make sure that you don't have to take one of the running backs with all the question marks and potential landing spot disasters with the NFL draft, I would take – yeah, I can see Pickens swapping for those two picks. I would not trade 110 or better for Pickens. Okay, fair enough. How about – let's – Let's go back to last year's draft a little bit, and I'm, I'm gonna we'll talk about this in another episode. With uh, I think we're gonna have Snoog on and talk about maybe some 23 versus 24 action. Um, but 112, would you would you get curious on Bryce Young here, Superflex wise? Yeah, so I have him tiered with 111 and 112. I would spend either of those picks because you're probably like. I'm taking Bryce Young over Bo Nix, Michael Penix. I know you're, you said you're a Penix guy. I, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to offend, but you're probably not going to get a quarterback. You, most people aren't going to qu- quarterback. They love their 111, 112. I made a trade in a league where, uh, what was the exact trade? Like we were going back and forth and it was with a patron. They have access to my tiers. I always hate whatever. <laughs> it's the worst. I hate, it's the worst. I always, have, I, al- I always have my tiers up. And on Google Sheets, you can see who's in there. And this one, I, I it was a, a guy in the chat, Remdog. And I see he's in there. And I see, get a message that he sent me an offer. I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and it was like dead even in my tiers. But, you know, to, to pivot there, I wanted to get a little something. So uh, like 111 or 112, I'll still buy Bryce Young. But if you give me a little plus, I'll pivot off of Bryce Young. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, we'll see what Canales can do. He's been great with some other quarterbacks, which is, you know, I think kind of what led to this job for him. Now he's paid two guards because their guard play was trash. They spent, I don't know, like 140 million already in free agency getting some, you know, some more guards. And now they've traded for Deontay Johnson. So they at least have somebody who can now get open and isn't 31 or 32 like Adam Thielen. Um, so, you know, things pointing up a little bit for Bryce Young, uh, where everybody's ready to close the door because that's just where we're at with fantasy. And I, I think you have think that stems. And it's always been that way a little bit, but it also stems from a lot of these redraft people coming over and having bad patience for anything. There's no but way Bryce Young could be good. I think it's a combination of that and with how quickly we see so many rookies produce now. Yeah. Like it doesn't take three, four years. Like, oh, let's give them time. For all like, of them, but some of them it does. Situation it does. or the player or, you know, some, whatever. But I, I think it also comes into play like the way the NFL is. Like teams are willing to pull the plug on coaches in their first yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. No, and because of that, it's like we, we got to produce. We got to win now. And if you're not going to do that, well, they – because the plug will be pulled on them. They, they okay, we're going to make the quarterback change. We don't have time. We can't be patient because my job is on the line. Uh, and, and the trade with Bryce Young, I moved Bryce Young in 404 for Nico Collins. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm down with that. That's as So long I as, thought a pick was involved. It, it, it was not. But. Yeah, basically not. Yeah. Uh, all right, last question, and I just want to throw another quarterback in here because I think the rest of the guys down on our ADP list, I don't, I wouldn't consider trading them for this, this, these later picks. Um, how about Baker? Any intrigue of grabbing Baker in a super flex here to, to on on your one your winning team one twelve? See if I can grab Baker from somebody, or or does that not get it done at this point? From you know them re-signing everybody and giving Baker some cash. 
I would move the 111 or 112. I would take Baker over Bryce Young, honestly. Oh, I like and it. it. And again, you look at the two, three year window. I think Baker has a better outlook. Now, I will say back to Bryce Young really quickly like, if Deontay Johnson, if his value takes a dip, which it might because now he's in Carolina, right? Like, him playing with Russ because of what we talked about with the first read and the middle of the field, I think his outlook is better with Bryce Young in Carolina than it is with Russell Wilson or Kenny Pickett with Arthur Smith in Pittsburgh. I agree. Bryce Young, he doesn't want to force the ball into a tight window. And you saw that because Jonathan Mingo couldn't create separation. You know, Adam Thielen did to an extent, but he is he's older. Right. And Deontay Johnson, the dude gets open. That's yeah. he may drop some balls. Sure. But he will get open. He may not block go, sometimes. <laughs> but he may fumble it and just watch it. Uh, yeah. But he's gonna get open. Yeah. And because of that, I really could see a season where he gets like a hundred and thirty. 30 targets. I I, yeah, I really could see that in Carolina. Might be 130 targets with an A dot of two, <laughs> but he, he's gonna get targets. Yeah. And uh I, I think just, that it, that does help the outlook of Bryce Young a little bit. But still, Baker Mayfield with Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, Rashad White, K Dot and coming in a, on in a weak division. I'm gonna take Baker. Week no more. Kirk's in town, baby. <laughs> Correction. Formerly weak division. Yeah, but I, I see what you're saying. No, yeah. Baker's interesting, man. I, I keep I keep being in the in these startups and in the And I, I guess the, Carolina's in that division too. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but so they yeah. Well, I mean it's t- T B D on them, but I think the Falcons are gonna turn around and the Saints are always could go either way. Um but you know, Baker's interesting because I keep see I get I get in that eighth round and a lot of the times I end up making Baker my third quarterback. Um Mm-hmm. And, and I really, I don't really don't hate that at all. Um, so interesting, interesting with Baker. Cause that was a guy whose value plummeted. And now we've, it's, we've ricocheted back up a little bit and climbing the charts and was last year an outlier or is that, and is, was Canales a big part of that? And is, is it going to be a little harder for them, you know, moving forward, but at least most things stay the same for him, you know? Yeah, I mean, the continuity is big, but yeah, Canales revitalizing the career of Baker Mayfield, uh, Geno Smith. Yeah, It's it's certainly going to be a, a positive there for Bryce Young, but with Baker Mayfield, I mean, we saw him, like, this is another year. How many years in a row going back to college has he had a new coordinator? Like, yeah. it's, it's just new system, new system. So hopefully there is some continuity there from a system perspective, but we saw some flashes when he was in Cleveland. And certainly we saw it here in 2023 with the Buccaneers. I I, I think it continues. I think he's a, a really good quarterback three for your dynasty roster. And I wouldn't mind having him as my quarterback too, if necessary. Yeah, so if it, we could go not last question non premium or non super flex or super flex, we could answer both ways. If you're in the one twelve, you know, and and you're the champion, you got a good roster, you're ready to go again. Do you just do you just go grab uh, you know one of those 28, 27, 29 year old veterans with that twenty with that with that twelfth pick and just know you're getting points in your lineup and yeah, it doesn't add value. It's not gonna you know nobody's gonna like it in in the dynasty community of trades you should make. But at the end of the day, it's probably a trade that you can make to help you win some money, especially non super flex. I got that one twelve, like Terry McLaurin, somebody who's 28 value down a little bit. Maybe he gets Drake may. And we saw one game with Jacoby Brissett, somebody willing to throw him the ball mm-hmm. and he was gangbusters a value who nobody wants. So just kind of food for thought that where if you're the champion kind of coming back, you can kind of take it wherever you want. Uh, JB. If my roster is a little bit older and it, maybe I, I lost a piece, you know, something happened and I need to plug another player in to my starting lineup to potentially repeat, I would be a little bit more willing to go get like that Terry McLaurin type, especially in non super flex. But if I have a team that's loaded up with veterans, like, I'm I'm picking. You got between Keenan Allen and Devonte Adams and Aaron. You know that Stephon that Diggs, Aaron yeah. Jones, James Conner, Travis Kelsey. Uh, you know, just I'm picking ten guys out of like fifteen on a weekly basis, and I'm like I I could plug and play any of these guys. I'm gonna stick with the pick and go for the upside in that situation. Yeah, that might because even be a trade back making, to the next year situation for me. 
Because the, cause then I'm just putting myself in a situation where I'm probably going to be wrong on a lot of start sits, <laughs> and I'm going to be super yeah. frustrated. Yeah. Or I'm going to be in a situation where now I have so many pieces entering the very tail end of the career that it would be nice to to pivot towards a younger piece. But like going with the uh, sticking with the pick and going with the younger asset. If the rest of my team is built to win, but I only have like eight or nine guys that I really feel comfortable with, mm -hmm. unless I'm looking to transition that roster, let me continue this yeah. this battle to compete, if you will. Kind of my my thoughts there uh, as well. I I just feel like you know, and, and and the point of this exercise is just to kind of see where things are, where the value is, and and talk about it a little bit. Um, but there's also you know I'm in plenty of leagues where I know that two or three of the teams probably aren't going to make any picks and they're going to trade them for players. And, and, you know, nine out of 10 times, if they're a pretty good player and make some other moves throughout the season, they, you know, they're usually a pretty competitive roster. So as fun it is to make these rookie picks, it's awesome, but you can also find a lot of value in people just getting so hyped for these rookies. And they don't mm -hmm. always have to be old guys. They, they, you know, we had plenty of thing guys that weren't old here. Um, so I don't know. Any, I mean, uh, look at look at my team in UDPL. I I mean, I got Dak into a quarterback, but then it's Nick Chubb, Joe Mixon, Kyron Williams, Tyree Kill, Christian Kirk, Tyler Lockett, Calvin Ridley, Mark Andrews, Evan Ingram, Travis Kelsey. That's kind of the exact situation. Right. Like it's a team with plenty of pieces to to feel comfortable with the starting lineup, but that team. If I can't start to do some things, it's going to age out. But in the meantime, I'm going to look to compete. Right. You know, I don't want to brag, but I I came in second, but chopped the first place money last year. So that because I know how my luck is in championship games, <laughs> it's absolute shit. Yeah. Uh, but that that's a that team is in a very precarious situation. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, that's an interesting. We, me and Big D talked about that a little bit on a Patreon episode of kind of what to do there, and it's like, well. I think in the beginning of that league, depending on how things go, you you make another push and see how it goes. Mid mid season, you might be pushing off some pieces, but exactly, you know, that might be a scenario where I buy a middle aged kind of guy for one of my later picks that I had and and try to push in again. And if not, then I sell and maybe I gotta suck for a year or two. But that you know, to not to go through your whole dynasty tenure without sucking ever is is pretty difficult. I know some people like to act like. They know everything and their team never sucks. But like, hey, you're just going to go through those cycles. You like to keep it as short as possible, but you're going to go through those cycles, especially if you're if you built a winner. Um, Out of all of my teams, I have a handful. I'm like, this team's going to be really good in 2030. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Nothing till then. But right. Man, it's time is <laughs> yeah. coming. Yeah. Which, you know, a lot of the time there's so many people talking about this and, and everybody has different ideas. And I, I just feel like nobody wants to get caught with their pants down with these old guys on their teams, but it, or middle aged guys. Everybody wants those just a bunch of young wide receivers who we're not sure if they're going to score points. And they just it just they just want to show you this crazy rot, which, hey, if I'm in a startup, a lot of the times I do kind of draft a little bit in that way. But that's because I want to explore, exploit other people's expectations of things. And I know that's my best way to be able to move around. And that's my best chance of having currency. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not going to stick with half of that roster. I'm going to trade a lot of those guys away for some of the older players. I'm just going to get better value on them after we're out of the startup and they've sunk down for you a little bit. And my guys are all still young and shiny objects. And you're like, Oh, I got to have those guys, even though they're probably not scoring that many points. And you're looking at your roster going, Oh man, I need to rebuild. Uh, yep. Cause everybody seems to be in a perpetual state of rebuild. <laughs> you know, I think the biggest takeaway out of almost two hours talking with you between the two episodes, don't get caught with your pants down with old dudes. I yeah. think that's, kinda, I think <laughs> I that's think the that's, biggest takeaway. Yeah. Here. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. All right, JB. I'm going to, I'm going to leave the, the office here. My wife's going to say, what were you talking about? <laughs> I told you it was fantasy. Yeah. This one wasn't fantasy football. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Uh, JB, give us a plug before we get out. I don't even think I gave you a plug in, in this show, so I'm very sorry. Um, no, don't apologize. At the, uh, at the Bauer Club on Twitter, at Dynasty Theory FF on Twitter for the podcast. Uh, follow us on YouTube, the podcast feed. We got the Patreon, five bucks a month. We got a lot of extra perks there. And then we have the uh, 
free discord community which is just going 24 7 a lot of great conversations uh fantasy football related and just random pants down with your old with old pay, guys a lot of, a lot of that content <laughs> you know that that's part of the patreon that's part of the <laughs> yeah, you gotta pay uh, that's <laughs> dynasty theory after dark that's but, right uh, that's yeah right. we got a lot of great stuff uh, like i said in the last episode if if you enjoy dynasty fantasy football which i'm sure all of you do come check it out i i, I truly think you'll enjoy it yeah Please, definitely i can't vouch for them enough they're, they're doing great stuff over there um please like subscribe comment below keep all this stuff coming we got live mocks uh at least every other week typically on sundays so hit us up on, on the twitters at the ff dynasty to, to get that link or join the uh the five dollar holler on the patreon side of things and get that in the discord we we give that first first chance over there but you know we also build an adp with those guys but we like to throw that out to the public too to get some different people uh involved in that too. so it's not the same you know 50 80 uh guys drafting we like to throw some some lines to the public so follow up the ff dynasty uh we very much appreciate you guys jb always a pleasure thank you so much make sure you go check them out and we will catch you next time